Hello, everybody. I'm going to break all the rules. I this is the a talk that I'm least prepared for. Um, I've had a torrid week. I've had external um, assessors at the hospital. I've had some big um, medical disciplinary cases. I've had system oversight meetings. I've had had to support our executive team because we're not meeting our financial deficit. Um, and in my desperation, I called John on, I think, I don't know if it was I'll just go, um, are we cancelling Saturday? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, we're going to have it. Oh, no, absolutely fine. I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then he sent a very gentle um, email to, you know, if I could have your presentation, I'll go, oh, <laughs> And so, this is a presentation I had literally gone with, but, and I then hope that I would have listened to all the speakers today and I could sort of pull things together and just point you all in the right direction. I failed at that as well. So again, not doing terribly well, I have to say, but this is life. This is me being authentic. This is the job I do. Um, so who am I? So I'm an obstetrician. I deliver babies. I'm a high-risk obstetrician. That's what I've been trained to do. But what is my current leadership role? I'm a medical director. I'm a medical director in a challenge trust. It has estate challenges. It's got um, quality challenges, CTC challenges. It's got financial challenges. The whole lot. And I've been seconded there, having said no, I don't want to go. <laughs> um, but it's all the different hats I wear. So Chelsea Westminster is my base. I've done all the medical leadership roles there, other than medical director. And then um, I had an opportunity to do quite a lot of ministry work. And I used to go abroad in holidays and do healing through the great healer and not through my medical degree knowledge. Mm -hmm. And life was great. And I'd be at church on Sundays and they'd say, oh, and if you've got a difficult boss or you've got an issue, um, you know, come forward, for prayer. And I'd think, I'm the boss. I haven't got anything. You know? <laughs> I, I, I was living the life. I absolutely was living the life. Came back from one of these ministry trips and everything just went crazy. So when they talk about blessings and battle, Every, everybody was kicking off. I'd go to a meeting, the consultants were kicking off about that, I'd go to somewhere else. And suddenly it was like push fires everywhere. And I'd go and I'd put that one out and I'd say, oh, I'm going to attend that meeting. I'd put that one out. And it was like one of these children toys that as you, you put one out, that pops up and you put one out. And this was happening. And I won't bore you with the story because I don't think it's a story I can still tell without some of the comments. But I actually felt quite let down in that role. I'd been involved in merger of two trusts. I'd been part of the communication teams. I'd, I worked and sacrificed for the trust. And I sort of didn't feel backed up. So I left leadership and I just went back to clinical practice, did a lot of ministry. And I thought, this is it. But because of my hurt, I spent about three months in what I call my duvet days. You know, you're under the duvet. But during those three months, I felt the lot had taken me from thinking you can do this under your own steam, you know, you're quite good at it, to write down. And when you're right down there, you you look the you look at yourself, you look at um what part of arrogance is there in me? What are the things that I thought I could do? Why do I feel shame I resigned from the from the road? But all of this, and during that time, the Lord took me on a journey, Holy Spirit cheated me. So I really, so it was all for a reason. You know, your things that happen are for a reason. So I came back from that, no longer in leadership. And then um, they wanted me, could I possibly just chair the BAME network because you needed to tick off the EDI bits on the drug <laughs> And, and I said, you know, not really my bag, but we've got two really good co-chairs. So I will, I'll, 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 you know, what do I do? I develop people. So I'll leave them on and I'll hold on to this. 
Um, at the same time, I was asked to do a little bit of portfolio work where they just wanted a credible leader. So it would start finish. So, you know, I could sort of pick and choose. Anyway, I take up the chair of the BAME network. I don't even have a first meeting. COVID-19 comes through. Everything explodes. Black lives happen. Inequalities are blown wide open because COVID revealed what has always been there. Suddenly, the NHS is looking at itself and saying, could this really be true? Surely, we're all caring people. We can't be a racist organization and all of that. And I, in the chair role, end up on regional trust, national committees. And then suddenly, all my medical leadership training, sitting around the table, understanding how the NHS works and being able to influence all of that came for a time such as this, where I could use my voice, not in an angry way, but in a way to say, to talk about what's right, what's wrong, what are we not calling out, speaking truth to power. On the back of that, I get to be special advisor on the trust board on EDI, no qualifications whatsoever. And if it's like, because you're black, you're qualified, no. If, you know, <laughs> I don't know anything about the whole journey and the whole, so, but I'm there. But because I'm back at the table, the trust is thinking, oh my God, we've missed her. We've missed what she brings to the table. We've missed her, her, her mental agenda. But guess what? I had changed. So I'm not, so I think they probably thought we didn't know she was that good. I wasn't that good because I had lots of things I had to have sorted out. So I was coming back with the version that the Lord wanted me to say. And he said, I will use you. I will use you as a mouthpiece. And I will use you for what I want you to do, not what you want to do. So that's me in a nutshell. Uh, and that's the leadership role I am in. So when I, I mean, you've heard so many different talks today. And what I want to say is, don't look at people and say, oh my God, how does she do her, the, you know, 26 hour day? Yeah, how do I do? Because it's 24 hours in a day, so I can't possibly do that. <laughs> but you're not me. The NHS is a complex health system. It's as if someone just got concrete and just poured it in and it's all set and we've got to now untangle it. So you have got to decide what is your role? What is the race you have been set to run? Keep in your lane. Don't worry about what I do. I've got the training and the skills to do that. I'm a high risk obstetrician, but someone prophetically said, actually, I'm not like a midwife that births normal deliveries. I do complex deliveries. I do high risk deliveries. So that's why I do the difficult. So what I am in the natural is what I am spiritually. It's what I am in leadership. I untangle things because I, un I do the difficult. But what is your particular race? So stay in your lane. But what is it about the NHS that's complex? It's all about where are we vulnerable in a race? When you hand over the baton, because that's when it can drop. So even in services from ED to the ward, problems, from the hospital to another hospital, issues, we drop the ball. From the hospital to primary care, from primary care to community or mental care. And all these systems are all interrelated. What is your role? Your role is about excellence in what you do. And when there is an interface with a baton, how do you influence that? So it's smooth, so it's not dropped. So pass that along. What are the attributes of leadership? So it's, for me, it's the four A's and the R. Availability, We you've heard it here. You know, am I available? What needs to be done? Don't disqualify yourself because he qualifies us. You know, um, what about your ability? Yes, you need a bit of ability, but start gathering that. Start collecting that. Start putting yourself forward. So when that opportunity comes for the time such as now, you are ready but you will also learn on the job as you've heard. Af 
capabilities are not that A, but I think when we're talking about that, we're talking about the joy of the Lord. Affabilities of being like a, a, an amiable fool, you know, who, affability, if you actually look, look at what it's not, the definition of that, if you're not affable, you're not friendly, you're not approachable, you're distant, you're inaccessible. So the opposite of all of those is what affability is. The NHS, if you, you know, like I sort of think if I stand on a spot too long, you know, um, I'll just be packed up and moved because something's been reorganized. There is so much change. There was so much change in COVID. There is so, you can hardly recognize. So what's our policy now? Um, what are we doing now in Target? It's a, so you've got to be agile. You've got to be nimble. You've got to move with the times. You cannot be a stubborn resistor. You have to be an early adopter, you know, and understand the why. But in all of this, it's about resilience. So when I hadn't done my slides till last night, and when I thought, oh, I wonder about it, I think I thought about it coming, you know? <laughs> so resilience is just get yourself there. Why I couldn't quite get myself here at 10, but just limp across the line and he will give you the grace to do what you need to do. You don't have to worry about that. You just have to say, I'm available. I'm a, you know, it's like meetings you haven't read the 234 papers for. Lord, you know, what can I say? You know, I haven't even read this paper. I'm reading it in the me meeting before. Don't let me speak for the sake of speaking. Let me say something that will make a change. And I can open my mouth to speak. And I will only know it's the Lord because when people say, and as Judy said, oh, and I, of course, Judy is here. Because I didn't say it. Because I didn't say it. So availability, it's really about here I am, Lord. Why not now? Because we've heard about Moses. Why not here? Why not me? At Hillenden, we've got a program going through which is about I am the change. So if in the secular world, world we can say I am the change, I can make a change, how much more us that are called to be self and life? So when I think about I don't think I can do this much longer. Then I'm going, well, who is going to do it? Who is going to do it? Affability. Be your friendly and good nature. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's some days where that's just almost impossible. <laughs> but with God, all things are possible. Um, I do consultant meetings, um, and I do it about once a month, and it's part of my community. It's something I've brought in to engage them. And I've got one of these desks. Um, I don't know if you've seen them, the, the desks that can stand. And the idea is supposed to be for the back and thing. I never use it except for my consultants meeting. So I always, you know, because it's on teams and you get, the, so I bring it up to, so I'm standing like taller, right? And then I tell them all that's happening, warts and all. I bring them along with the uncertainties so that join us with this, not the executive, the executive, you know, join us with this. What can you do? You are a senior leader. You are an influencer. If you can get, understand our direction, you can influence the areas you're in. And I get all the bits back, which is why I say, I don't feel as if I'm a friendly and good natured bit, but I I, I smile and, uh, and, I, and I say, I hear you, I know that. <laughs> And at the end of it, guess what? I get the text or I get the email. They feel better. I have a pounding headache because <laughs> I have, you know, and literally I finish it and I'm sitting like that. And the whole, because they're giving, giving the whole time. So I want to go to somebody and say, oh, I really don't want to eat to me. And then, you know, you turn around and they're like, nobody to go to. So, but 
There is, you know, there is. And this is what happens. So sometimes even when we don't believe, he gives us the grace because you want to say, go all up. You know, <laughs> you've got mortgages, you run your family, you do all of these things. So why are you behaving like a two-year-old? Yeah. Right here, right now. <laughs> you know, you know, you just go, I know it must be really difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Sleep. Just like at the head. <laughs> but we need to be on we need to be inclusive. It's all about capturing the hearts and minds. You know, in 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 COVID times, we were in command and control. We had a national crisis. I was gold. I'm on gold. That's the easiest way to manage. Just do it. Don't even ask me. Don't just do it. And people knew because people were dying. It was wartime. But in peacetime, you cannot do a command and control. You absolutely can't, because otherwise you are exactly as you've described everything you hate in a pompous, non-listening, self-opinionated, red, you know, if you've got those color charts, a red director, and they think I'm really running this organization well, but actually, you're not having the people following or leading with you. So always, I said, I'm going, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And I'll have to take two, take a deep breath in and say, Lord, you're going to have to come and give me the grace to just get through this next meeting. And you always think he's not going to do it. And then suddenly it's there. It's just not so important. He takes it off you. He takes it off you. And if he didn't, I'd be that tall because I'd be weighed under with all I have to do. Agility and adaptability. So <clears throat> COVID-19 has had an un <clears throat> and what's the word? unprecedented, <laughs> the most overused word, <laughs> impact on healthcare landscape. We've seen the accelerated digital transformation. All the things that would have taken us five years of committee and board <laughs> meeting and approval and proposal and business cases, we did in the twinkling of an eye. So we do the remote consultations. We have remote or virtual wards. You know, we, we, we work in line with our other business partners, the ICS, worked in shadow form during COVID because you brought together primary care, acute trusts, mental health trusts, you know, the whole lot together, all with one intention. What can you do out there? What hub can we set up there? Who can mutual aid? Who can do this? So suddenly we worked in a collegiate way that we've never done before. We shifted from hospital because hospitals couldn't cope. So we started looking at hospital avoidance, what we should have done years ago, because we know the hospital is the wrong place for our elderly people. Because what do they do? They get worse, they get COVID, they slip on our floor, they fracture a hip. So they come out worse than they came in, better from the acute events, but worse in terms of the general bit. So hospital avoidance, we started thinking about new strategies, early supported discharges, because we had to empty the front end and get this out so we could get flow going because we were gridlocked. But the opportunity came for all sorts of new roles, all sorts of roles that the community trust appointed you, but you worked in the hospital, you're an AHP, in the hospital, but now you work across into the primary care and into home. People were thinking about new roles. Why am I saying that? Because as this is happening on your trust news, on your apps, on wherever you get your information for whatever, they will be saying a new role has come up. And you go, oh, that looks interesting, but it's not, it's new, it's not for anybody. So anybody can go, provided you are captured by what the role is saying. So where are we now? It's a whole new reality. We are there in our sovereign acute trust. By that, I mean our hospital. We then have to work with place. Place is community primary care, local authority, third sector, mental health trust. We've got to link with all of them. 
Now we've got these acute provider collaborative, so big hospitals are coming together in my sector. There are four acute trusts, Imperial, Chelsea, Westminster, London, Northwest, and Hillington. 12 hospitals coming together, one board in common. So you can imagine what that's going to do. How many bosses do I have now? And then all of that sits within the wider ICB who are saying, let's do joined up thinking. So all of those require what? A medical director needs to be on the board, but medical director needs to be there. You need to be on the court team. So suddenly your job that was difficult enough now has been, why am I saying me, me, me? It's not about me, 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 but if that's what's happening to me, it's happening to my next line reports. It's happening to the lot behind them. They're trying to get their job done. Suddenly somebody says, you've got to represent the trust that wherever. So suddenly it's who are we? Who do we work for? What's the bigger picture? Who's making things happen? But it was in that, the talk just before lunch, that it, I just suddenly got that policy, different people, end user, because sometimes part of what I need to narrate is that, are we all gone absolutely barking now? You know, uh, you know, are we all the emperor? What going on? Because some of the things that are happening are just ludicrous. But if you're not there to say it, because there are many of the roles that people have, that there is a hierarchy. The chief operating officer needs to get the performance metrics right. The chief finance operator needs to reduce the deficit. The, you know, the chief nursing officer needs to get safer staffing levels and there's a formula that works to help. But the chief medical officer's role is to speak truth to the situation, is to say the things that nobody else can say. And guess what? They listen. So one of the things I want to say is that do not underestimate, both in your medical role, that you have a voice. But the voice can't be an angry voice. The voice can't be a moaning voice. The voice has to be one that also comes with some solutions, right? Otherwise, you're just like my consultants when I do the consultant back, which is just, you know, firing all the bits to them. Well, I think you know your service is the best. What do you want us to do? What, well, nobody listens. I'm listening. You know, what, what is it that you, what is it that, but we do, but we cannot spend more than we have. You know, you don't do that in your own life. We can't have a 17 million. So what can we do? We can't boil an ocean is my favorite bit. You cannot boil an ocean, but it is one step at a time. Okay. So the how, and this is for me, because this is how I see people in the NHS, if I go towards, if I go to NHS, we've all got our heads down, mm -hmm. just doing the stuff. Well, hello, hi, hi, I'm Kimberly, I'm the medical, yes, yeah, sorry, so what did I do? Oh, sorry, what did you, you know, like, that's it. Just let me get through the day. Let me just get those notes out. Let me just do that. People walk around, hello, hi, you know, like, you know, yes, yeah, yeah, that's who we've become. We've become dehumanized. So, if there is something I can say is lift up your head because you cannot see what's going on if you are task focused and you're looking down. And that is where you will see opportunities. That is where you will see new roles. That is where you will hear something and you will think, oh, that resonates with me there. What can I do about it? So, and who is the lifter of our heads? Who is? Lift it and he will show you where it is you want to go. But he can't if your head's down. What is your location? Where are you working at this point in time? And have you maximized what you can do? All of you work in places that their organizational values. Are you the exemplar of it? Are you that staff will say, there is someone who displays the care values of communication, attitude, responsibility, and equity. That's who we're called to be. Because kingdom culture is about excellence. That this be, what is it about us that makes us different? That people say, oh my God, it's busy. That patients go, it was a crazy night. But that nurse was like an angel. 
that doctor. You know, that is who we're called to be. So what are opportunities? And if there isn't an opportunity in your location, because you've put your head in into 360, is change location. It may be that, Lord, are you asking me to change location? But there are opportunities to be champions. You're thinking, oh God, you don't know how busy the work is. Oh, you don't know from day, you know, we're short stuff. Oh, guess what? Workforce is the you know, NHS number one problem. But there are opportunities. Do you want to be a diversity champion? Do you want to be a freedom to speak up champion? Do you want to be one of those things? Now you go, oh yeah, that's just another gimmick. It's not another gimmick if you are that champion that's making a difference to somebody who didn't know where else to go and asked to speak to you as the freedom to speak up champion. And they took, they, you became the advocate. Because these are ETI or diversity companies. These are all the things that we're supposed to be. This is supposed to be who our values are about, about inclusiveness and, you know, about, about justice and about all of that. And guess what? Those things come free with a little bit of training. And suddenly your job has purpose. Yes, you've got your bit. I'm an obstetrician. But this is a leadership role. Mental health first aider, you know the whole thing about the current pandemic now is not about the COVID pandemic, it's about the mental health pandemic. And if you want to see inequalities and people being treated in the wrong place and the absolute exponential rise in new presentations, there is something we have to do there. Either we all need to be, be do so so and start doing, you know, but we have a population of staff and patients who are not well, who are anxious, who are depressed, who are just not coping with life. Quality improvement programs, all the trusts have them come in at entry level so you can make a difference. Decide to be a trainer. Decide to be a super trainer, so you become a trainer that teaches the trainer. Because you can take, I want to make a difference through QI. Audit and governance and safety, all the things, it's not say nobody's seeing it. Okay, here, come do it. Come tell us. Come make a difference. If you are a junior doctor, being a rotor, um, What's it called? The rotor person, mm -hmm. coordinator. Thank you. It took how long ago I did that. You learn people skills that will set you up for your leadership role <laughs> because nobody wants to do Christmas. Nobody wants to do. The, everybody wants to get married on the same day. <laughs> you know, and all the rest of it, you learn to say no. You learn. You know. You actually grow in that role, and they are lifelong skills for leadership. Opportunity to publish. Somebody says, this is really, why don't we make a case report? Everybody puts their head down. Be the lifter of the head. I'll do that. Because what happens is you get to speak to that consultant. You get to do it together. They think, oh, you're excellent. Did you know what's the research value? And what are you doing? Yeah. And suddenly you can get a different trajectory. I'm not talking here about picking people out because you're like me. I'm talking about you shining that opportunities come out of that. You did what you needed to do diligently. Go to listening events. I bet you will all be eloquent. If they're listening events with executives, with people like that, go just say, speak eloquently, speak from the heart. You will be noticed, would you like to join the People's Forum? Would you like to be a staff representative on this? Because suddenly you are taking things that are frustrating, but you are changing them to add to help for the greater good. Staff networks, this is where I started. That's where I ended up as medical director because I was just doing the Bain Chen network reluctantly. And then I sort of got to do what I do now. Secondment opportunities, maternity leave, those are great opportunities of people going off, taking some time off. Go into that world, you weren't quite ready. We're never ready. We're never ready for the next step. The oh, NHS has a huge raft of training opportunities. And why do I say that? Because these are things that you can use to equip yourself whilst waiting for what you need to do. Emerging leaders call, establish 
establish leaders called get yourself a mentor who doesn't have to be within the healthcare, preferably outside. So now when you say, I don't know if I can go in tomorrow, they will help you with how you can go in tomorrow because you are doing a great job. Get a coach, do one of those insights, self-awareness, know what color you are, know why actually, because you don't learn just about yourself, but you also learn about other people in the team and know why you always um, never get through to one person and they always, I found out from doing insights that one of my colleagues, I won't tell you what color he was, but he doesn't like to be touched. And I often would, you know, would put my arm around. And so you can imagine when you start that and you think I'm coming in to show that I care, it's actually the worst thing you could actually do with him. So already he's stressed by it. <laughs> he likes facts, he likes numbers, he likes data, he doesn't like touch. When I challenge him, he goes, no, I didn't say I didn't like touch, but I need to be no giving, given notice that you're going to touch me <laughs> and when, and then I'm okay with it. You know? uh, so, so compassionate leadership, you know, that's all the rage now. You know, the, and that's what they're trying to say for all of us. <clears throat> what you know from the top center through to region, through to London, through to ICB, it doesn't apply to them because the NHS is a bullying culture. And it starts from the top. Um, so, <laughs> um, it, but compassionate leadership is what we're all supposed to be exhibiting. But for us, it should be, that is who we are. Because it's about, when they say attending, it's about listening with fascination, being present. Not, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, as someone's talking to you. You know, you have to say, I've got 10 other things to do, but tell me, how can you help? And then you look at them and then you listen. It's about understanding what they're saying because you've listened. It's about empathizing and then it's about helping. There's no point listening at, at the end of the I'm so sorry, I've got another meeting. And you've left them essentially how they came in. And guess who the ultimate compassionate leader is? JC, you know, that's what he did. That's our role model. We don't need to go anywhere else. We don't need to go for a call. If you take the woman at the well, it's just that when he listens, he listens in the supernatural. So he tells her, he's heard what they're saying, but he's listened and that he empathizes and understands. And then he goes, yeah, I can help you because I can give you living water. The woman with the issue of the blood, it's exactly the same thing. He could listen, he could hear that this is someone whose need was, I have had this problem for all these years, with that the MHF, you know, and it's a wicked problem. And it was, I can help. Your faith has healed you. Let's not even go with, you know, it's about diversity. Let's go with male, the centurion. Lots of examples, he listens supernaturally. He empathizes, he feels it. And he helps and he does something and makes a difference. So we've got our role model there and then. So I just saved you on that course. You wanted to pay <laughs> money. <laughs> so the last thing is resilience. We are different. We are not alone. We have a co-partner who went ahead of us. So he knows where you are in that next role already. So you're thinking, how am I going to do? He's already gone ahead of you. So in all the things we do, we have a partner. He carries us when we say we can no longer move. And when what is resilience all about is about that brokenness of that's it, the elastic bands just snapped. I it just can't or anymore, you know? But he restores us then. That's what he does. He, so there are those times in the some mornings I absolutely can't get up, you know, because I have such long days. And the, I put the alarm on and it's about four, five minutes apart because I know between the first and the second, I would have fallen asleep <laughs> again because I was up so late. And it'll be like about the third one. And I will always say, Lord, I cannot get up. You have got to get me up. I just, you know, and almost as soon as I say that, I put my foot down, go brush my teeth, go get myself ready for the day. He restored us all. He will not give us anything more than we can take. 
we know where our help comes from. It's from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. It's his NHS as well. And he sent us there to say, it is broken, but I will give you downloads. I will give you ideas. I will give you solutions. The NHS needs us now more than ever because they run out of solution. Mm -hmm. They run out of ideas. So only God, only God. But we know that he wants to find the brokenhearted. We know what Jesus did on earth for the sick. So he's not going to leave it broken with waiting lists, going back to whatever. But the solutions are going to come from us innovative new solution. So with man, this was impossible, which is how I just, I know I should have a more cuddly picture, but sometimes <laughs> I feel as if I'm going into a shark infested, you know, and they're all around. And you think, how are we going to do this? And because I've been in leadership a long time, I, uh, I know the cynicism. I know the, I know. So it's, it's how do you call things out? We call it under, yes, but it's all got to be about equal. It's all got to be about access from somebody who absolutely doesn't even believe that, who, who doesn't get that there you know, and will bully the next person to get that done. So it's about speaking truth to power. It's about getting the, um, it's about getting downloads. It's like, you, you know, what are we going to do? You can come from some days and, you know, people say, you know, you were really good in what you did. You were really, ex I mean, I thought the way you described that, I can't, you know, I have to sit there thinking, maybe I'll go around with a dictaphone so I know what I said or what he said that I spoke, you know? But solutions come. And how do you know? It's by the fruit. It's by the fruit. You know you've made a difference by the fruit. Sometimes it's not at that time. Sometimes it will be the most difficult meeting, but you'll come at and someone will come and say, I thought you were very brave about what you said. I thought what you said was really powerful. You feel like I'm, you could have said that at the time. It would be really helpful. <laughs> I'll take you to the corridor. Okay? That's all I have to say. Oh, uh, thank you very much, Vivian. It's fantastic. Your honesty and humanity has been real with us today.